Hey team, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about learning past 20. So first off, I just recently had a discovery. I discovered that I was actually 28 years old, not 82 years old. So contrary to my popular belief, there is still a lot for me out there to learn. And learning is the track to success. A lot of the time people think success comes from work, but a lot of the time what predates work is learning. So if you want to do something, you first have to study how to do it. And that means not necessarily you have to go to school, but you have to learn it somehow. You have to take up a course. You have to register an Udemy. You have to start a solo learn account. You have to go uh, get an app. You have to uh, start um, borrowing some books from the library. Basically, you need to go out and get information you need to learn how to do something before you can do it this is such a simple thing and i think a lot of people past high school past their university degree get kind of stuck on the learning track because a lot of time the thought is i'm finished i'm uh, now gonna have to get into a career now i'm gonna have to work and now there's no more time to learn no more time to study no more time to gather data it's time to get to action but a lot of time Learning is a non-stop career. So learning is going to be a part of your life. Every year you can have to learn new skills and you can have to brush up on old ones. So successful people, I think, are successful because of their ability to keep learning. What I've noticed when I talked about, for example, ENTJs in my last video was ENTJs are often highly successful because they are well-read, well-studied people. They often read more books than most people and mostly nonfiction. They are people that go out and test hypotheses and discover new innovations and then they try to put it to action. So something that I felt blocked on when I grew up was I didn't know any programming. I didn't know any HTML. I didn't know how to make apps. I didn't know how to create websites. My skills on the internet department were weak to say the least. And a lot of time it was, I had ideas for the web, for creativity on the web, for web design, for our, uh, apps development. I had all these thoughts in my head, but I couldn't really make anything out of these things. So a lot of time, these ideas, they remained in my pot chamber inside and they were twisting and turning. And there was like this thing that, oh, I would love to design this, but I don't know how to, and I don't have the capital to hire a programmer to do it for me. So I got stuck. And uh, perhaps getting stuck, perhaps the reason we get stuck is because we are refusing to learn and we are on the process of trying to do something which we lack the skills necessary to complete. So first off, let's talk about how you can get information and what you can do if you feel stuck. If you feel stuck in terms of career routes or work, on um, developing a project, on becoming a successful artist, becoming a YouTuber, the first thing you should do is you should get the skills. And now the good thing is the skills are basically everywhere to be found. So YouTube has courses on how to be a YouTuber. There are apps to learn programming. There are apps to learn web design. There are courses on Udemy to learn basically anything from cooking to painting to whatever you want. So a lot of the time your creativity, your ideas can be advanced by taking courses and by first getting the basic framework. I'm not saying you're not gonna have to learn how to invent the wheel. You're definitely, if you're an intuitive and if you have a new idea, you're gonna have to learn to do something that is not out there on the internet yet. And so nobody will know how to do it. What I'm saying is, before you can start doing the impossible, before you can start being truly original, before you can make the most amazing artwork, before you start breaking the rules and creating your own, you have to know the rules. So you have to understand what the base rules are and how you can exploit them and use them to your advantage and when you can bend them. Secondly, let's talk about why people stop learning. 
So a question is, why are people becoming apathetic in their 20s? Why do people stop learning their new skills? Why do people stop paying an interest into politics or political developments in their country? Why do people stop voting? Why do people become apathetic? Why do people, in a sense, stop going to school or stop taking courses? A lot of time, I think it's because people get kind of overwhelmed by how much there is going on in the world. And because they feel overwhelmed by it, they avoid it. We avoid what overwhelms us. We avoid what brings us uncomfort. We avoid things that are difficult. The mind has a natural aversion to difficulty. It wants things to be easy. And easy is going to McDonald's. Easy is going to the same work every day. Easy is hanging out with the same friendship circle every day. Easy is basically watching the same TV show every night. It's just those things that have a low bar, require low energy, low effort, and quick fun. So the faster the fun, the faster the payoff, the lower the step-in barrier, the lower the obstacles, the fewer the obstacles, the better. Our mind is trained to be lazy, to save energy. So this brings us to point three. What are we saving energy for? I mean, considering that we are living so such easy lives a lot of the time, you know, sitting on the couch, I mean, uh, taking a short walk at most, uh, watching a TV show, just reading a book, just uh, going to the same work every day. You know, the reason why we're saving a lot of energy, but we're not spending energy on anything. And here's the thing, you have to spend energy to feel energy. You have to challenge yourself, push yourself and do fun things and do interesting things in order to activate and experience and feel what energy feels like. A lot of time we have so much energy inside of us that it's like we're going to blow up, but we're not doing anything with it. And we don't know that we have this energy inside of us. We don't know that we have this power. So something you also have to realize is you have a lot of power in you and a lot of energy and a lot of potential that is just sitting there, that is just waiting to happen. So the inspiring story that I can tell you, my personal story is a few weeks ago, I started picking up on programming again. And what I started realizing was, okay, I want to improve my personality test. I want to improve my website. I want to make things look better. I want to come up with better ways to test. I want to come up with better algorithms. I want to come up with smarter methods to do things. I want uh, to really challenge myself to hit the next level for my website. Perhaps in the future, I want to make an app. And to do so, I have to learn how to program. I have to learn front end development. So I signed up for Grasshopper. I signed up for Solo Learn, And I've basically been just skimming through all these courses and I've been doing it every day. I've been doing it at 1 a.m. in the morning. I've been doing it at 7.30, the first minute after I wake up. <laughs> I've been just going through all these courses, just uh, almost manically, almost obsessively pushing myself to master and learn it as fast as possible. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to start applying it. And you already see some results. You already see some improvements. If you check out my new personnel test, for example, you already note this visually, it's a lot better than it was before. And it's because I learned the skills and I pushed myself and I did my best to make it happen. So my message to you guys is you're not 82, you're 28. Uh, I don't know what age you are actually in reality. Uh, no matter what age you are, I think you have a lot of potential and you should always keep learning. And I think when I'm 100, I still want to keep learning. I want to keep growing. I want to keep developing myself because I have this flexible muscle inside of me that can do so many things and I just got to make the most out of it. Finally, let's talk about the personality types that find it the most difficult to learn and the personality types that find it the most easy to learn. The personality types that find it the most easy to learn are the extroverted perceiving types. The personality types that find it the most difficult to learn are the introverted judging types. Introverted judging types prefer to focus on amassed knowledge, amassed data, amassed experience and putting experience to practice, to creating and making new things. 
Expert and perceiving types prefer to look at available information, the new data, new input, new possibilities, changes, new developments, new tricks, new methods that they can use in the moment to learn, to apply, to develop, to improve. So expert and perceiving types will have it a lot easier to learn. So if you are an ENFP or an ENTP, you're already on the right path and you should really make the most out of that. As an INFJ myself, Learning takes quite a push because first to learn you have to admit that your current data is outdated and that's very difficult to do because you tend to get very attached to what do you know. So it really requires a lot of humility and a lot of energy and a lot of effort. But no matter what, the payoff is huge. So everybody should learn and everybody should keep learning. And the more we learn, the smarter we are and the better fit we are to handle and to manage our society and our life to the best, to the fullest. Thanks for watching and hope to see you all in the next video.